to a brand new episode of Coming Distractions brought to you by the Nerdpocalypse Podcast. I'm your host, Jay. Uh, all right, guys, we're going to review the boy band con, The Lou Pearlman Story. This is a documentary uh, about Lou Pearlman. He's a famous record producer, right? Yeah, I guess you would call him like a... Because like he wasn't producing records. He's just sort of like the mastermind behind a number of different boy bands of the late 90s, early 2000s. And... Well, and Carrie, you saw this documentary because you are our resident boy band expert. I love boy <laughs> bands so, so much. So you are bringing this information uh, to me. Yeah. So t- tell us about this. So this is uh, really a deep dive into who Lou Pearlman was and what he did. Okay. Because not only um, was he someone who put um, the likes of InSync and the Backstreet Boys together under terrible record contracts, but he's also the man behind one of the biggest Ponzi schemes in United States history. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So, um, wait, what, what was that scheme? Uh, he had an airline called uh, Transcontinental okay. Airlines, yes. uh, and um, you may be familiar with Transcontinental because that was also the name of the record label. Okay, that, I know the are... name, but I like the name sounds familiar. Right. So, so uh, Transcon Airlines only ever existed on paper, and oh, he nice. was in uh, Orlando and putting these bands together and and whatnot. But at the same time, he was also basically cheating a whole hell of a lot of people out of money in investing in this airline that never wow. actually put a plane in the air. Wow. Um, Amazing. So, yeah, at, at the end of the day, he defrauded, like, 2,500 people out of, <laughs> out of money. Like, I think literally the only person to, you know, have a, a bigger Ponzi scheme uh, was Bernie, Bernie Madoff. Madoff. I was going <laughs> like, to say, I was like, there's nobody who's beaten that guy. He got like 150 years in jail. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it's a really interesting dive into, there's so many things going on in this documentary. Because first of all, you've got the boy band aspect of this. Sure. Um, and even if you never listen to NSYNC or the Backstreet Boys or or any of them, uh, it's it's super interesting to look at to look back at the culture of of that time, like they were huge. They were every, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. You couldn't escape them. Yeah, absolutely. But for the first, no matter how much I tried, <laughs> for the <laughs> for the first several years of their career, they weren't making any money. That's crazy, dude. Like packing arenas around the world, and the like. I don't want to ruin it, but like the first uh, check that Insync got was less than a barista makes at Starbucks working part-time. Wow. Like, it's incredible the sort of stuff that this guy was doing, the contracts that he put these guys sure. into and all this other stuff. So this is an examination of the boy band culture, of the music industry at the time, of the machinations behind that big Ponzi scheme, <laughs> of, of who Lou Perlman was. It's an examination of a complete sociopath. I like the sound of that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it sounds it's like something really I, good. I would absolutely watch. It's yeah. it's really it's super good. Um, it was directed by Aaron Kunkel, I think I'm pronouncing that right, and produced by Lance Bass of InSync fame, sure. uh, who I met once when I was nine. He's a very nice boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I mean, you've got all sorts of uh, other past boy band members. Uh, you've got JC Chazé and Chris Kirkpatrick from InSync as okay. well going on record. You've got um, AJ McLean from Backstreet Boys. You've got Aaron Carter, who's a hot mess. Yeah, that dude is like super fucked up. Now. He's yeah. mm, <laughs> like, didn't he? Even know, like, he got like hardcore into drugs and shit. I think too. Yeah, like he got a couple DUIs under his belt and whatnot. He looks like an absolute corpse, and like it's honestly very sad. Um, because he was he sold a million records before he turned ten years old. That's insane. Yeah, like <laughs> that's Lord. that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, honestly, yeah, that's not a good idea. Um, but yeah, I mean, guys from some of the lesser boy bands as well. You've got a guy from O Town going on record. <laughs> uh, and I mean, like it's it's interesting Take to get five. his perspective. To, yeah, because by the time that these guys were signing to do work with Lou, the fallout from In Sync and Backstreet Boys suing had already happened. So they knew the kind of guy that they were working with. But they just wanted a kind they of just that. wanted a, a career in yeah. music. That's actually kind of sad. So like that sucks. Yeah, it's it's super good. Like honestly, if even if you're not into boy bands at all, even if you were just completely on the outside of that culture, being sure. like, stay away from me, please. Yeah, that's. Right. <laughs> 
Uh, it's a, still like a really good true crime documentary, and uh, that would get me to watch. Yeah, it. it's yeah. again, it's it's the examination of a complete sociopath and what he did and how he built the fame of uh in sync and backstreet boys basically on the backs of more than 2000 victims who he had already schemed money out of excellent <laughs> there you go yeah. um if you had to give uh, the boy band con the lou perlman story a score i'd probably give it like a four okay um just because like it's sort of it jumps around to a couple different time periods so it's not like a fluid sort of story but sure. i think it's just a really good documentary all right so. There you go. Uh, the Boy Band Con, the Lou Pearlman story, four out of five, and we will see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye. You're watching the Nerdpocalypse YouTube channel. Make sure you click that button to subscribe and check out our weekly podcast where we talk about movie, TV, news, tech, and weird stories from around the internet.